let's just start the topics today. I'm kind of jumping around the order, but uh, I I feel like talking about this one first. Big Ten Media Day was yesterday. We were not there. We put out our questions we would have asked. There was a lot of good content that came from it. I actually want to give a shout out to John Fanta, who I thought did a phenomenal job covering everything yesterday. He got the quote from A.J. Hogard. He had some great quotes from Izzo about Jeremy Fears and his team in general. He had really great quotes from every single coach in the conference. John Fanta is the best in the business, and uh, it was good to see him getting so much value out of that day, even though we weren't there. I just loved as a fan of the big 10, seeing what he was able to pull out of it. One of the things he was able to pull out of it was a quote from Illinois head coach, Brad Underwood. You know, we love Brad Underwood, daddy, Brad. He is my father. He owns me. Brad Underwood said this, everybody's worried about point guard, but me. We've made a bunch of jokes at the point guard expense or at Illinois' expense for point guard this offseason, uh, he is going on record and saying it's not a problem. Do you believe him? No. Do you believe that Brad Underwood believes that point guard is fine for this team? No. Uh, that's a twofold question right there. He might not think it's he might not think it's a problem. He might, but he did he say the words, I'm not even thinking about that. He said everybody's worried about it but me. Pretty much. I think I'm paraphrasing. I don't want to say the wrong quote, but that was it was everybody's worried about point guard except for me. That's see, that's just not true, because I feel like every single coach who doesn't have an established like play point guard before point guard is worried about point guard play. Point guard play is so massive in college basketball. It's it's the field of 68 buzzword. There was a there was a season where. Point guard play was uttered on every single After Dark episode and every single clip that you saw across the college basketball media sphere. Um, so it's it's definitely something that I think he's worried about. And to, to be honest with you, like, if he would have came out and said, yeah, I am worried about it, okay, yeah, there would have been a lot of overreactions. There would have been a lot of probably me and you like, oh, he's worried because it's not going well in practice. But it's, it's, it's an honest thing to say. He probably should be worried about his point guard position. He's bringing in a guy – who has not played point guard at the college basketball level before that he does, he does not have a guy who has played point guard at the college basketball level. So it's, it's a real concern to be worried about your point guard play. Now I respect him coming out there and saying, I'm not worried about it, you know, kind of maybe sticking with his guys, not opening them up to more criticism from a very critical fan base in the Illinois, you know, fighting Illini, even though we love them and their passionate selves, but yeah, there's there's just no way he's not concerned about his point guard position. Now the level of concern might be different, but there's just no way he's not concerned even somewhat. Yeah, Brad's smart. That's the thing. Like I somebody was asking us to do like tiers of Big Ten coaches. And when you get outside of Izzo, and right now you have to put Painter near the top. Outside of those two, my my answer for who's the third best coach in this conference every time immediately is Brad Underwood. I don't think there's somebody pressuring him really even for that. Uh, now what's he supposed to say? Like, of course, every coach at these events is going to get in front of a camera and paint it. Like they had the best summer ever. Everything is great. They're so excited. Their team can win everything. That's what you're supposed to do at media day. Otherwise you're doing a horrible job. What I like about Brad is he'll actually talk about basketball and he'll say real things like, um, I was going up and down the list of coaches in this conference. There's a lot of guys who, uh, just give you the newspaper quote every time, or uh, even if they don't, even if they're like a little entertaining, they're just too nice of guys Th- to me, like Izzo and painter and Brad coincidentally, the three best coaches in the conference are the three that will actually dissect their teams and talk basketball with you in a serious way. And I prefer Brad from an entertainment value because Izzo gets a little insufferable to me. Like when he said that they were an overtime loss away from the final four, as if they had already beat Florida Atlantic by 30. That was crazy. I, I, I feel like that was a mistake. You you really think he just messed up? I think he just messed up. I think Izzo is just elite at framing everything as if he gets success for things they didn't do. Like, I, it's <laughs> like, I do the same thing. Like he just was really, really good at it. Um, a painter to me, like entertaining, but how many times can we hear someone just be a really nice guy say, yeah, I run great offense. I recruit tall big men. And I'm thinking about adjusting in March. Like, okay, we get it, dude, Brad, you never know what to expect. Like one minute, Brad 
is trying to sign point guards. One minute he's signing a caffeine addict. One minute he's blaming the caffeine addict. One minute he's cussing out his players. He's making fart noises. He's talking about booty ball. Like it, you just never know what to expect from Brad. And the one common consistent thread here with Brad always is that he is genuine. Like Brad doesn't really put on a shtick for better and for worse. Brad Underwood is Brad Underwood, which is starting to make me think maybe he's actually not worried about his point guard spot. Cause I think like, I think we would have heard Brad put a little more honesty into it. He's not a guy who sugarcoats things and he's not a guy who kind of ducks it. So um, I don't know. I've been extremely critical as we both have been on this program. Like they should have went out and got a point guard. I gave their off season, basically a failing grade because they tried to like everything they tried to do this off season was centered around. Let's get a point guard. They had a big list of names and the, the list started dwindling until it was only Ray J Dennis left. And that's it. And then they went all in on him and they failed. That's a failure to me. But now that you know, you missed it. There's still things in the cupboard here for Illinois basketball. And I still think Brad will make the most of this team. Like Brad always puts together good regular season teams and he's going to do that, whether they have a point guard or not. So um, I don't know. I think we're kind of like buying back in on Illinois a little bit. And I, I don't think he should have said anything different here. I think he might like his point guards though. Like shit. As, as, as we go further along, like throughout the summer, we've been talking and getting closer and closer to the season. I feel like I've gradually gotten more in on this Illinois team. Yeah. Like I could see a style of play that could make them successful. I can see a path to, and I, you know, at the start of it, I was kind of at a low point on them with you. Like they didn't get the point guard. All this didn't happen. Yeah. They got Terrence Shannon and Coleman back. That's amazing for them. That's huge in this, in this era of basketball, but also, you know, they didn't do some things that they went, they set out to do. But as like the summer has gone on and I see the foreign tour and see practice and kind of see what's going on around the program, I'm like talking myself into this Illinois team, like having a path to being a top four team in the Big Ten. Like, I think they'll be on the outside. I think when we ranked them the other day, I had them at maybe like five or six. I had them five. I think we both had them five. I think we both had them five. And yes, I'm in on Maryland, Ohio State, but like, you know, we brought it up on this on this pod before, you know, they're right there. There's teams that are outside the top four that can get themselves a path to that. I think the fourth spot in the Big Ten is going to be one of the most, and this sounds bad, I guess, because it's a fourth spot. But the, that fourth spot is going to be one of the most exciting battles, I think, this year in the Big Ten. Because right now I got Michigan State, Purdue, Maryland as three. I think the fourth spot is going to be a battle between some teams. Can I do the thing where I compare everything back to my program? Mm -hmm. This might be one of my worst comps, but you got to bear with me through this. Okay. I'm starting to get some vibes from Terrence Shannon and Coleman Hawkins as a duo that reminds me of Derek Walton and Zach Irvin as a duo. Here's what I mean by this. They don't play the same styles. They're not necessarily the same type of impacts. Terrence Shannon's only been there two years. It's not four years, but it feels like he's been there forever. Coleman certainly has been there forever. And there's been a lot of ups and downs is the point. Like these guys have always had a lot of promise. They were prestigious guys from the moment they got together and they had high regular season moments. Don't get me wrong. Irvin and Walton had those, but they're approaching the twilight of their careers and they're on the verge of if the season goes exactly how it did last year, they will be remembered as guys who didn't really achieve anything. That is for lack of a better word it is what it is. I know Coleman was on the team with Kofi. Like at the end of the day, he can say he was a big 10 champ, all that. But teams that were Coleman Hawkins teams are going to be remembered as like, yeah, though they were there. That's it. Unless they get over the hump this year. And that was the case with Irvin and Walton. They were on the loaded team with Stauskas that was really good. And then they had a couple of iffy years that were marred by injury. And then all of a sudden these dudes are seniors with one year left. You know, this is the final run and you don't know what to make of it. Cause that Michigan team on paper wasn't that good. But then something turned. Like, I don't even know what it was. It, actually, I do know what it was. Walton went nuclear. <laughs> Walton became the best guard in the country for the final month of the season and propelled that Michigan team from just being, like, fine to Big Ten tournament champions, a Sweet 16 team, 
and one of the best teams in the country over the final stretch of the season. Illinois could do that because Terrence Shannon is capable of doing that. And uh, like nobody's comparing him to Big Ten player of the year stuff because he's not on Michigan State like Walker is and he's not Zach Eady. But like Terrence Shannon absolutely could be a first team All-American. And regardless of who's playing point guard with him, if Terrence Shannon just makes that personal jump and Coleman Hawkins is right there with him, I think there's a chance this duo could be the duo that like we kind of all took for granted and kind of all overlooked because of other things. But at the end of the day, those two guys are dogs. And if they play well, I wouldn't want to see him in the NCAA tournament. I wouldn't want to see him as a Big Ten opponent. I don't think I can't be more in on anything you've ever said. <laughs> That's crazy. It felt weird when I started the comp, but I'm like, no, I'm here. I'm vibes. here. I like it. Like, I, <laughs> Terrence Jr. was really good last year for folks who don't like want to admit it. Yeah, he did that. He did average 17 points. Yeah, it could happen. And it, I mean, shit, if they have to play him at point guard a little bit, it could definitely happen. Um a one quick Coleman quote from big 10 media today. They asked him what NBA teams feedback was for him. And he said, they want to see me shoot the ball more. I've been a little hesitant in my career. <laughs> one of my favorite quotes ever. I'm kind of in on that. He's never been hesitant. Has he? No, never. this is the, this is, this is the thing. I, <laughs> Coleman is not hesitant to shoot the ball. I think he's hesitant to shoot a good shot. Like, Coleman rather hesitate if he has an open three, have a guy run out. He's like, you know what? I still want to shoot a three. I'm going to do one dribble, two dribble, and maybe, like, shoot, like, off balance. I think that Coleman's step – I talked about it. Coleman's step, shot selection. If you're, like, going to be a pick and pop big, just do the popping and the shooting. Like, you don't – don't hesitate. Like, just go up and shoot good shots, and I think it will help him immensely. So I'm kind of in on that. I know what Illinois fans are going to be like, oh, my God, Coleman shooting more. <laughs> They're going to have to groan, moan and groan a lot more during games now. Yeah, I was just laughing at that. Like, that's that's Coleman's one big takeaway from the summers. I need to shoot the ball more. That's what everybody Respect. wants. Like, Respect. The kid's already been shooting, like, NBA range with 30 seconds on the shot clock. Um, okay, final question for me on this. So, we're saying we we don't know if we believe Brad or not. I think we do believe him, but it was, like, the politically correct answer to say he's not worried about point guard. I would have liked to hear some names. Like, if he truly feels great about point guard, I think if I'm him, I respond by being like, well, Gibbs Lawhorn is crushing it. Like, Kevin Willard hit the podium and was like, Deshaun Harris-Smith is the most talented freshman I've ever coached. I didn't hear that unless I just missed the quotes. Like, I didn't hear any, like, Gibbs Lawhorn's ready from Brad Underwood. I didn't hear any, like, Justin Harmon's looking great. I didn't hear the specifics. So Gregory, you, you know how Illinois works. You know how that locker room works. Oh, can't, yeah. can't you can't use names You're cannot right. use names you can't prior you can't play favorites i get not but let's play favorites it's uh it's march 16th i don't know i don't know what day it is thursday the ncaa tournament first round there's a minute left and illinois is down one to chattanooga who's on the court for illinois and who's playing point guard it'll be it'll be Justin Harmon, Terrence Shannon, Luke Goody, Coleman Hawkins, Dane Danger. Okay. Okay. So you're playing – Harmon has the ball in his hands? Down one, a minute left in the season. He's running the show? Harmon is getting to the right wing for Coleman to Dane cross screen, throw it into Dane, and then let's let's work. Let's work. All right. I, I think I have a slightly different answer. Terrence Shannon is at point guard. Mm. If they're they're down one with a minute left in the season, the ball is in their best player's hands, and uh, he's he's operating at point guard. He's surrounded by three and D guys, which means we have Sincere Harris on the court, which means we have Luke Goody on the court, which means we have Coleman Hawkins at the four, and uh, on. Fortunately, I don't mean to disrespect Dane Danger, but Dane Danger is going to play the five in this scenario. I don't think Illinois' other guards are going to be on the court in crunch time. Now, I don't know what that does for spacing, but uh, I'm, I'm starting to think we're overthinking this. It's just, okay, they don't have a point guard, but the ball's in their potential first-team All-American's hands all the time as if he's the point guard. And, that, and that'll work. That'll work for us. It should work. Okay. Uh Congrats to Illinois fans. We talked about your team in a positive light, I think, right there. That's a win, right? I think. I don't know. 
I love talking about Illinois. That's the thing. People think it's clickbaiting. I just love talking about this program. That's the truth. Yeah. It's enjoyable. What, what am I supposed to do? I like talking about Brad Underwood and what yeah. his, he does with his program. It's I love fun. Terrence Shannon. I love Coleman Hawkins. 